He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Okay, I'm going to open the phones up throughout the full four hours today on any subject, any issue you wish to discuss. Any local news item, national item, piece of legislation, 1-800-259-9231, 1-800-259-9231. We'll get you up and on the air. I want to continue today talking about the situation in Arizona uh, really a mild law. The media is misrepresenting it, saying that anyone with brown skin uh, is going to be pulled over and basically harassed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for two and a half years, they have built Border Patrol checkpoints as far as 100 miles in. And they have roving checkpoints. And uh, we've interviewed people that have been beaten up, black people, white people, Hispanics, all Americans, uh, who every day driving to work have to go through these, and they start saying, look, you're not going to search me. You're not going to ask me questions like this is an airport. You need to be down on the border. And you remember Pastor Anderson, who they beat within an inch of his life, splitting his head open all over the place, tasering him over and over again, uh, and he got you know, he videotaped it. And he got the videotape uh, of it, and that's on YouTube. Uh, so this already happens to Americans, okay? I don't care what color you are. And so the federal government, oh, cares so much about civil rights and people's uh, freedom. And you know, basketball teams are changing their names to Spanish names uh, in protest. And, oh, my gosh, uh, you know, Hispanic people are being persecuted. And the media is telling them this uh, to make this be a racial issue because 80 percent or more of the illegal aliens in this country are Latin American. Uh, the point is, we're going bankrupt. I mean, do you see every day articles about school districts firing half their teachers, uh, laying off a third or more? And this is going on all the time. There'll be more cuts uh, of city employees, of even police. I mean, are you witnessing them uh, going to four-day-a-week school days? Are you witnessing uh, massive budget shortfalls everywhere? I mean, do you see what's happening? And this is what the banking system does. In fact, uh, you know, today is falsely known as Cinco de Mayo Mexican Independence. It's not even celebrated in Mexico. It is not Mexican Independence Day. It's made up like Kwanzaa to create more division. And uh, it's just another example of all of the propaganda that's going on. And, and when I was rereading to make sure I was accurate about this, uh, the history of Cinco de Mayo and Cinco de Mayo confusion, uh, it just confirmed even more what I had historically remembered. And you read the story of Mexico, it, 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 it's the same story we've seen in Greece, the same story we've seen in Argentina, the same story now in Portugal, the same story in England, the United States. The banks came in, got the country in incredible debt, the people threw off colonial rule not once but twice, but they never escaped the banking cartel that controlled them. And that's why Mexico has triple, on average, by every major index, the natural resources of the United States. I mean, Mexico is rich, rich soil, rich in oil, rich in timber, rich in minerals across the board. Why do they have one of the poorest populations on Earth and one of the richest elites on Earth? They're in the top three after the United States and England. Why? Because it's a top-down, vertically integrated society by design to keep control of the population. And so next hour, I'm going to break this down and go over it. Uh, but uh, there's all this Cinco de Mayo confusion, and I have to witness every time there's a Cinco de Mayo in Austin, if you go downtown, you'll see giant parades, day and night, people drunk everywhere, waving Mexican flags. And I'm sorry it's offensive. It's offensive. I mean, imagine if you had a giant U.S. population in Mexico City on 4th of July running around uh, with tens of thousands of American flags. I would imagine that would be offensive. And look, I don't want to hear that the United States belongs to Mexico. Mexico uh, was Guatemala as well, but they lost that. All it was was the Spanish Empire and then the French Empire and then a Habsburg Austrian slash German empire. Okay? 
It was anybody who could land troops with guns. It was a free-for-all down there. All right, so so the the claim that 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 Mexico with the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo got ripped off is a joke. Okay, Mexico couldn't even hold their forts against the native populations of Comanche and Apache and Red Stick and others. Okay, it is a sickening, disgusting lie, and I am sick of it. I have read the history up one side and down the other. Okay, and other people should do that. But why does the U.S. government in colleges and in high school? Listen, when I was at Anderson High School, I was a couple years in Dallas, a couple years here in Austin, and I was in art class, and uh, they had an art field trip with the uh, best students of the ladies' five classes. And uh, she was a nice art teacher, but a socialist, basically. And she took me down to UT uh, with her, quote, best students, and I got to sit there for six hours at the University of Texas at their art department hearing about how U.S. stole Mexico and seeing these art displays about how evil white people are, okay? I mean, you want to know what woke Alex Jones up? It was stuff like that, okay? Because I'd already read history books and I already knew it was a complete deception, all right? Okay? Uh, look, does, does Britain have a claim on the United States? I mean, they used to have it. No. Does Spain have a claim? No. Does France have a claim? No. Does Mexico have a claim? No, you don't. Okay, does does Germany have a claim? Because, yes, yes, the, I mean, we just say Germany, that's the, the, that's the nation today. It was the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, and uh, then you can even debate what royalty it was. They were all intermarried. The Saxe-Coburg-Gothas, the Habsburgs, uh, but it was basically based out of what is Austria today. Okay, now, now they had uh, California and Texas and Arizona and Nevada. I mean, do the French get it? Do the Germans get it? Do the Austrians get it? Uh, it's just as asinine a claim of, of uh, people in Mexico being taught in public schools and here in the United States. I mean, it is taught in studies all over the United States, almost every school district in the country sits there and teaches the school kids, this is Mexico and it was stolen. No, this is not Mexico, it was not stolen. If anybody has a claim to it, it was the native tribes that lived here, period. And they didn't have governments. They didn't have private property. They didn't have a system. And you bet, via conquest, the United States took it, okay? Now, you got to ask yourself a question. Do you want to live under the United States Bill of Rights and Constitution, which they're now violating? People say, well, oh, we don't want to live under America. Look, it's tyranny. Well, that's the globalist takeover. No, no, no. I'm saying, do you want to live under the Bill of Rights and Constitution and habeas corpus and due process and private property rights where you get to keep what you earn and you produce and you make? If you paint an oil painting, if you paint an oil painting, uh, I mean, do you own that or, or does somebody else? No. If you go out and plant some corn plants in your backyard, who gets to eat that corn when it's ready in the fall? Who gets to butter that up and give it to their kids? Or do you have to go give it to your neighbors? Because in a democracy, I guess if 51% of your neighborhood association decide that you've got to give your car to the neighborhood association and they're going to sell it and then they're going to take the money from it, I mean, do you have to do that? That's slavery. They call it democracy. We are not a democracy. We are a constitutional republic. Okay? And Mexico is a narco-terrorist kleptocracy, a monopoly of the rich. Mexico has collapsed. It's nothing but armored citadels guarding the wealth of the elite while the slaves work in the slave factories and in the fields. They have no rights. The police wear black uniforms. They have troops on the street corner. Now, what's happening in America? The exact same thing. So, no, I don't want to live under an empire. I don't want to live under a king. And I don't want to live under a bunch of El Jefes. I don't want to live under, you know, the corrupt government uh, leaders who are paid off by big mega corporations. And that's what our government is. It is, it is a big uh, cesspit of corruption, period. But let me explain Cinco de Mayo confusion. It is a common misconception among the non-Mexican community in the United States to mistake Cinco de Mayo or the 5th of the Mexican Independence Day, which occurs September 16th. Cinco de Mayo actually commemorates the victory of the Mexican army over the French Empire at the Battle 
And it goes on in 1862 during the French invasion of Mexico to make Mexico pay debts to the empire because they'd thrown out the French colonial government.